uh, thank you organizers for inviting me and uh, presenting some of our data here. We are a lot about peptides and central inflammatory stress is mediated by peptides, by endogenous peptides. And we've, talk, we've been talking a lot how these peptides will hurt work. And there was some hypothesis about transcription factors and how they may work. Well, you only know that peptides can be hormones. And that hormones work through specific receptors, and that this may be a very promising endogenous system of mechanisms, and that's what I want to talk about. Stress is not a disease. Stress is something that's around us, but of course we all know stress makes sick. Aging is stress induced. Stress accelerates aging. Well, it's not stress actually, it's stress response. Because stress is from the outside. So let's have a little look at what stress is. Stress starts in the brain. Stress is primarily a brain function. And here we all know that this starts here in the cognition. You see something, you hear something, you feel something. And then a whole cascade of events starts in the brain. The limbic system triggers now neuroendocrine events and they go to the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus secretes a peptide, corticotropic releasing factor. And this corticotropic releasing factor secretion goes through the pituitary where it again releases a peptide. And this peptide, as you all know, is ACTH. And the ACTH then stimulates through the blood all other parts. And what I want to focus today is only the adrenal gland, the adrenal cortex, to be precise. And this has been known for a long, long time as the HPA axis, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And the system, as you all know, works that the HPA axis ultimately activates the adrenal cortex, which then secrete glucocorticoids. And glucocorticoids are the important systemic stress hormones, so we have here a connection, an endocrine connection between central and systemic stress response. So the entire body is stress. What is it for? Well, first of all, it's necessary to enhance glucose metabolism. Glucocorticoids facilitate the metabolism, they make, uh, use more glucose, but then of course they block the parasympathetic nervous system because we have now to be ready, we have to be alert, we have to fight, we have to fly, to escape. So everything that's not immediately used is shut down. This could be the parasympathetic system, that's of course the immune system, which is not used immediately, and of course it's the enhance of glucose utilization. utilization. And we have the rise of ACTH, and then the rise of glucocorticoids, which then causes the systemic stress response. Now this doesn't only happen during stress, as we all know, that is a caterism. And there's a permanent change in the morning, as you all know, the body temperature is so sort of low and it rises slowly, but the group of corticoid levels are very high. They increase and then it drops slowly to the day, and also the melatonin levels increase. We heard a lot about melatonin this morning. And then at night, Google corticoid levels are low. The body is sort of calm, and the body temperature increases. And something that's not shown is that cytokines also increase during the uh, during the night. And the next day, the same, same thing happens. Now, what's happening with cytokines? As you all know, these are the inflammation. I'll talk about this in a minute. Glucocorticoids, the steroid hormone of the adrenal cortex, then uh, 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 affects all cells in the body mostly the cells of the immune system, 
and they basically block the secretion of cytokines. Cytokines are substances that mediate immune response, and of course they also affect transcription. So glucocorticoids, the systemic stress response, as a consequence of the cell response, then acts on the cytokines, which as you all know, are the triggers of the immune system. So we have the cellular and the humoral immune response depend on the liberation of cytokines. So as soon as cytokines are liberated, immune cells start to attack antigens, they recognize foreign antibodies, uh, uh, for foreign antigens, and they stimulate phagocytosis. And that's basically inflammation. Inflammation can be defined as the liberation of cytokines. And so stress is anti-inflammatory. The activation of the stress axis activates uh, the uh, block, uh, blocks the cytokine release, and so we have here a, a blockade of the uh, immune system. And we all know that entire medical fields like dermatology, allergology, rheumatology are based on one straight form. Glucocorticoids are used as therapeutic agents. Now, I mentioned the circadian rhythm. This thing happens endogenously, and not just sleep, actually sleep can be looked upon as a physiological state of inflammation. The body temperature rises, cytokines rise, glucocorticoids are lowered. And that's why sleep is a preventive therapeutic uh, approach. That's why we lay down, that's why we go bed to bed when we are sick. Because the cytokines, of course, take care, care of the immune system, we take care of tumors, and we take of infections, and so we need this circadian rhythm, this permanent up and down of systemic inflammation, and the inflammatory stress has to be uh, followed by the systemic stress of the daily circadian rhythm. And you know that the circadian rhythm is one of the first things that cha is changed during aging. And you can look at aging like it's an enhanced state of inflammation. And the first is that elderly people cannot sleep too well. By the way, this is also one of the symptoms of depression. The, the circadian rhythm is short, so the, the people don't sleep as much, they are longer alert, and they, uh, their uh, stress axis is activated in order to enhance this. And the hormonal stress response is altered during aging, the circadian rhythm is altered, the melatonin levels go down, and also the adrenal functions go down because adrenal glands can only produce their hormones for a certain amount of time and at a certain level. This is the pancreas. Now, where do steroids come from? Where do what's about the biosynthesis? Well, that's actually based on mitochondria. You know, we have this huge pool of literature about mitochondria, and we know that mitochondria produce ATP. They are the source of energy of our, our body, but they have many more functions. And mitochondria uh, can be regarded as an intracellular microbiota. It's basically they have a, uh, a prokaryotic genome. They have they are capable of their own proliferation, they're capable of their own protein synthesis. And they inside the cell of the they do much more than just produce ATP. They're not just the source of energy. They produce their hormones. The biosynthesis of glucocorticoids strongly depends on mitochondria. The meta metabolism of monoamines and the metabolism of